Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at the GMC 300E Plus Geiger Counter. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Um, as I mentioned before, this is the GMC 300E Plus Geiger Counter. You'll notice behind you I have a bunch of older stuff over there. Um, some of it is applicable to what we're going to talk about today. And some of it really isn't. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what's out there um, and what might be good and what might be junk and what might work and what might not. Um, this is by GQ. It's the GMC 300E Plus. It's the latest model. Um, this guy right here, you can see how big he is by looking at the difference between my hand and it. I'll show you what it comes with first before we go into specs and any of that fun stuff. This is the box it came with. It comes with a CD. Now, this does connect to your computer. It will charge via your computer. It has what looks like a AA battery that's rechargeable. Um, I took it out, put a AA in. It worked perfectly fine with a regular AA, but you can use the rechargeable. So I'm probably going to use the rechargeable until it no longer holds the charge. Um, but if you want to install with this cable and use the software on here to do real-time monitoring via your computer with this as your sensor, you're going to have to install the driver for this cord. Okay. If you just install the software, it's not going to work. Um, this has all the software on it, this little CD, and the instructions are really kind of not great. So your best bet is to look for the driver first, install the driver for the cord, and then go and install the software. Find the correct COM port. It will search through automatically in the software. Once you have all that stuff installed, you will have a screen that looks something similar to what's on this screen, on your computer screen and you'll be able to see real-time monitoring of any kind of radiological activity in your area. Okay, comes a little carrying case. Nice little afterthought, comes with the instructions as I mentioned. Um, they do have URLs to get more info. The site is actually pretty handy. Um, the site itself that makes these. You do have a USB charger plug and a cigarette lighter adapter plug that it comes with. Okay. We're going to turn the unit on in a second here, but I'm going to get into um, the specs of it. Basically, this is, it detects beta, gamma, and x-ray, okay? It doesn't detect alpha radiation, but for preppers and for people concerned about radio radioactivity from, say, a nuclear weapon or a nuclear power plant, that's not something you're going to really worry about, okay? The tube is a M4011 model. It's comparable to the Russian, uh, what is it, SVM11 tube. Inside here, the tube is what does the detecting. If you take the back off, you will see a big glass tube. That's what does your detecting. Okay? It's LC display, uh, LCD display. It's a dot matrix with a backlight. <clears throat> Working power is uh, 0 0.04 watts to 0.2 watts. Uh, it's a, it says 9-volt battery, but it looks like a double A to me. Um, and the uh, sensitivity is gamma radiation is uh, 0.1 to minus 1 MeV. So it's a pretty sensitive meter. Um, again, this is not something you'd dig out if, um, say, 60 miles from you there was a nuclear detonation. This is not what I call a war meter. Something like this, the CDV-717, is more something you'd be looking for, okay? That goes way, way up there into the rads. This is micro sieverts, okay? Sieverts. It's really, really small amounts of radiation. Now, why would you want one? Well, um, you know, some people are concerned about the Fukushima incident. And if the radiation is making its way to the West Coast, this is an excellent way to monitor it. Uh, if you live near a highway, you know. Uh, we live in the middle of nowhere in Nevada where trucks come through here to test sites with tons of nuclear and radiological stuff. You know, who knows? There's always the possibility that Yucca Mountain will open. Who knows? So one bad truck wreck with some radioactive stuff in it, this would be enough to say, hey, you know, your area is not safe. You might want to get out of there. Um, do you live near a nuclear power plant? Um, generally, nuclear power is pretty good, but occasionally there are problems with it. This will help you monitor that. And lastly, of course, nuclear war. <clears throat> now, we're going to go into the, the facts of, you know, if there's a detonation. Let's say I live in Nevada, and somewhere on the coast of California there was a nuclear detonation, okay? If fallout's headed my way, something like this is going to tell me about it. It's also going to allow me to kind of survey the area, get a baseline reading of what's normal and what isn't, and allow me to shelter in my home and avoid a lot of the fallout. And within, you know, a week, two weeks, however long it may take to decay, 
I'll be able to tell that it's safe to go outside. Now, quickly, I'm going to give you a quick look at it. This is your power button here. All right. Turn it on. See the screen light up. Did I not hold it long enough? I didn't. Yeah, that'll tell me battery level. And it'll start ticking away. Okay. You'll see the uh, heartbeat monitor. You can change that to text only mode. This is graphic mode. Uh, we can change it into text mode. That'll zoom a section. That'll give you a bar chart. So that gives you the bar chart there instead of uh, shows you how high the spikes are. That's counts per minute. And so far we have eight. And that's a very normal small baseline radiation. Um, I'm not going to go too deeply into radioactivity and its principles and how to shelter and how to build shelters and fallout and all that because most people's eyes glaze over and the information's out there on the web if you want to learn about it. It's really simple to pick up a book or watch a video and you can pretty much get anything you want from that um, and you can get a good education on that. So that's basically it. I'll put it back into graphic mode here. Line graph, no. Large, oh, ah, there we go. There's the large font. I wanted to show you that. That's point, point 11 micro sieverts per hour. Okay, that's practically nothing. Basically, let me get my information here so I can tell you. Um, 10,000 micro sieverts equals one rem. Okay? This is baseline normal radiation. But that's a neat thing to know for your area. You know, there could be an incident where they don't want to panic the public and there's some high radioactivity. You keep something like this running, you'll always know. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to turn this off for a second. We're going to go into the other meters I have here. There you go. Okay. Now, a few years ago, on a site that I belong to, um, we had a gentleman in Russia who was giving us these meters that we could buy off eBay from him. And... These guys right here, this is probably the most similar to the GMC 300E uh, because it has a bar graph, you know, a way to read a meter, I should say, not a bar graph. Um, something like this was his first, and this was, I mean, a very cheap item. This basically clicks, okay? And when the red starts beeping, when the red starts flashing and you hear the clicks more often, you know you're in range of some dangerous radiation. I'm going to turn it on here. I have batteries in it. And it'll, yeah, it'll click once in a while. But this isn't going to give you any kind of, you know, super accurate. This is more what I refer to as a get out of Dodge meter. It starts clicking really bad, and you know, I got to get out of here. All right, I'm going to swap the batteries out of this guy because I was a cheapie and didn't bring extra batteries out here for the video. I'm going to stick them in here, and I'll let you see how this one works. And this is just to give you some options. These aren't, I don't believe these are even sold anymore. And you can hear that. I don't know if you can see the light and flashes when there's a, a little bit of a signal. Um, this gives you the ability to dump it down here when you're done. Okay, if let's, this is more of a dosimeter. It tells you how much of a dose you're being exposed to. Similar to the, GR, the GM, uh, GMC 300. Now, you see where the meter is. It's jumped up a little bit. So this will give you an idea of how many uh, micro sieverts you've been exposed to per hour. And when you're done, you can dump it back down to zero again, okay? So, those are two other meters. Now, this is the stuff you see on eBay really cheap. This is a dosimeter, okay? This is a charger for it. Basically, they call it a charger, but what it does is it will um, adjust your pens. And this, again, does the same thing. It tells you how much of a dose you're getting over a period of time. And this is the CDV Civil Defense version 717. Okay, this is what I'd call a war meter, all right? This will, ra uh, this will uh, pick up radiation levels in rads per hour. Um, you know, if there's a nuclear detonation pretty close to you and you've managed to survive and you're sheltered safely in place, this is what you want outside of your shelter, and this does disconnect and has the sensors out here. You can run it outside. This is what you want outside of your shelter telling you when it's safe to go outside again. This and this are two different things, pretty much. This detects very, very low levels of radiation. Um, this would be good to have in your shelter to see if it's coming in anywhere. This is for, you know, all-out panic end of the world type nuclear detonation. Um, this is not something you put outside of your house to monitor every day because it wouldn't even read background radiation. It's, it's got a much higher scale. 
So let's get all that out of the way. Let's get all these little guys out of the way. And we'll go into this. Now these retail for about, oh, I've seen these uh, retail for about, oh, 90 to $120. Um, all in all, they're good little units. I've done a lot of research on them. Um, they work really, really well. I haven't heard too many complaints about them. A lot of people have been using them over in Japan where the Fukushima incident took place. Um, so they will, uh, they will definitely give you a good baseline of radiation in your area. This device is de de devised to be convenient, portable, small, easy to carry. It's got built-in audible and visual signals. Of course, it's got the screen. It can be used for radiation detecting and monitoring both indoors and outdoors, as well as uh, connected to your PC like I explained before. And you can connect it to your PC and it will log the data for later. This also will log the data itself. And when you go through here in the menus, you can read the log. Um, I haven't cleared it out for the last few days. You can read the log and tell where it's been high or low. So something like this you could just keep on your shelf in your house and run it for a couple days and see what your baseline radiation readings are. All right, let's get back over here. The main board has a clock, like I said, so the clock allows you to, and you have to set the clock, the clock allows you to um, do baseline readings um, over time. So you can see yesterday at 2 o'clock it was a little high, um, today at 1 o'clock it was a little low, and you'll be able to do that through the logging and through the software too, but you can do it right from this. You don't even need the software for that. The USB port um, allows you to connect it to the data viewer. Uh, let's see, anything else really important on here? Oh, we're going to get on to the topic of gamma radiation, which is really what you're concerned about. Um, gamma radiation is a cumulative uh, thing that adds up over time. Gamma radiation is almost identical to x-rays. Think of it like that. Um, something like that adds up over time, and it's sort of like lack of sleep. Up to a certain point, you won't suffer any ill effects from it. You won't even really notice it. But then there's a range where you'll start to feel the effects a little from cumulative exposure. And as your exposure level increases, you enter this weird range where you're kind of asymptomatic. Think of it as your second wind, and then things really catch up to you and you go downhill. So, we're talking about levels that are pretty extreme, like 500, 300 to 500 rotogens, which is seriously problematic. Um, you, you're going to be able to avoid that with a meter similar to this. You will never get that high on a meter similar to this, because you'll know long beforehand to get out of Dodge. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's really not much to go into. Um, there's tons of videos on the operation of it. And as I showed you, there's, you, know, you get into your menus here and you can go up and down for different uh, displays. But um, the base display with the heartbeat kind of monitor on it will tell you all you need to know. And then you can go into the logs and read up on it. So it's something good to have. You know, Like I say, it's, it's another thing to be prepared for. Um, it's not always nuclear war we're preparing for. It could be that truck that uh, has a wheel fall off it 20 miles from your house that was full of uh, radioactive material or radioactive waste they're taking to uh, dispose of. Something like this lets you know what's going on. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to enter into the contest. Uh, if you checked my videos a couple days ago, I posted the Tack Bar contest. It's going to run to the 30th. Don't forget to enter. And don't forget to subscribe or click like if you like the videos. Feel free to ask any questions. I can probably type out a better response than I can do talk out one on video. So uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.